Hi, this is Dr. Les, and welcome to another episode of I Bought a Farm. Now what? This morning is November the 6th on Friday, uh, and we're getting ready to work the heifers. We are going to load them up, haul them over to a neighbor's. We're going to vaccinate them for a modified live uh, respiratory disease complex with fetal protection and a five-way lepto. We're going to do an injectable dewormer uh, so that we can uh, get rid of the worms and, and boost the immune system before breeding. We're going to do a pelvic area check uh, and we're going to weigh them and we're going to do a track score and basically prepare them for the start of the breeding season. Um, as many of you know, here in Kentucky, uh, we've had a pretty severe depression in the feeder cattle market here in mid to late November or October and November. And so hey, when we do our, uh, our, our, our financial projections, um, looking at the Chicago uh, Board of Trade for feeder cattle, looks like the feeder cattle market is going to be suppressed for quite a while. Um, if that's the case, logically, what we want to do is to, to see if we can maximize some opportunity that we can get into, to, for these heifers. And you can see they're right up on me. Um, is we, we're going to go ahead and retain ownership and uh, we are going to prepare these heifers for breeding and sell them next spring as bred heifers. So that's what today's video is for. We're going to boost the respiratory disease complex using a modified live vaccine and we're going to boost their immunity against the five major main strains of leptospirosis. We're also going to check their pelvises to make sure that they're, they have adequate pelvic area to support a calf that could weigh at least 70 pounds. And we're going to do a reproductive track score to make sure that all the animals have, are, are close to cycling. And really what it is is just to find that if there happens to be one or two that's not cycling. And those those animals we want to go ahead and get rid of so that's our goal today we're going to catch them in the barn back the trailer up load them in a trailer run them over to the neighbors unload them put them through his working system where we can weigh them vaccinate them do the pelvic areas and so forth then we'll bring them back over here the owner got them up here in this lot uh, last night to prepare to catch them and so what we're going to do is we're going to catch them in the barn up here and then we'll load them up in the back of a trailer and take off so i'm gonna go get the uh, landowner i've got one other uh, guy coming to help us today and uh, we're going to get to work i'll video throughout the day just so you can see what we're doing here we're loading the heifers into the barn i'm a firm proponent of calling cattle versus driving cattle so what we did was we put panels in along the edge inside the barn. We have two crowding gates and then we just pulled the feed troughs into the barn, called the heifers, then the worker and myself backed up and we're just waiting for the heifers to go in to get a bite to eat. Uh, seems to be working well. The owner is calling the cattle constantly but we're getting ready to go here. It's almost done. There goes the last heifer. Then we pushed him into the trailer, hauled the trailer about a mile down the road to the neighbors to the working facility. Put the heifers through and off we went. Our goal again today was to vaccinate, deworm, do a pelvic area check, and a reproductive tract score. We wanted to weigh, but of course, the scales weren't working. So we had to guess on the uh, weight uh, for the amount of dewormer. Most of the heifers checked well, and we'll show the workup sheet in a minute. Here's the heifer that had the pink eye, uh, G112. Notice that she has a small scar, but not bad. She is healing nicely, and her eyes are no longer watering. Here's the worksheet from the today's work. Most of the pelvic areas were adequate to support a calf that's 70 pounds at birth. Three pelvic areas will be rechecked at breeding. Reproductive tract scores weren't as good as I wanted, but when we increase the nutrients, we should take care of that. Then we loaded the heifers back up, 
haul them back down to the farm and we're done. All right, we're done. It's about 1230. Um, took us about uh, two and a half to three hours to get the cattle worked. We got to the landowners at about nine this morning. Uh, piddled around a little bit, just to be honest. Uh, drove over to the farm, called the heifers, and the heifers went into the barn because uh, we, uh, we had a feed trough, feed. They were used to it. They followed it right into the barn, shut the gate back. We backed the trailer up. We put 16 heifers on, hauled them over to the neighbors. We put those 16 heifers through the chute, uh, vaccinated them again for the respiratory disease complex uh, and, and lepto using a modified live vaccine. And then we used an injectable dewormer. We used one of the trade name ivermectins uh, to make sure that we had maximal uh, stimulation of, uh, of deworming. Uh, we brought that first set of heifers back, turned them out. Then we loaded the remaining heifers that were here and the five heifers that were over at the other farm, took them to the working facility, put them through the chute, vaccinated them, dewormed them, hauled all of them back here. And so all 28 heifers are now on the 31 acre, 31 acre farm. Okay, so now all 28 heifers are over here on the 31 acre farm. And our current plan is we will, we've got some grass here. We haven't eaten on the north paddock of the 31 acre farm for a couple of months, really. But we're also going to put out two uh, moderate quality hay uh, bales, uh, big round bales. I'll have the analysis of that hay uh, for, for us on the next video. We're going to increase the supplement that, we, uh, that we we're feeding the heifers. We've been feeding them five and a half pounds a day uh, for about the last two weeks. And we're going to bump them up to six and a half for a week, and then we'll go up to eight pounds after that. The supplement that we're feeding them is really a very simple mix. It's cracked corn, dry distiller's grains, a rumensin mineral pack, and a little bit of limestone. Feeding them five and a half pounds now, going to bump it up to six and a half, working to eight, ultimately, so that we want the heifers increasing their plain of nutrition as we prepare them for breeding. We checked all their pelvises. Uh, pelvises look fine. I'll put, I'll put that data up. Uh, track, uh, we checked the reproductive tract scores. We had two heifers with a reproductive tract score two, which I wasn't expecting. Um, they were the two youngest heifers, which is not a surprise. Uh, but I did anticipate that since they were semi-angus cross heifers, they would uh, have gone through puberty um, before now. What we plan to do that will help these heifers uh, stimulate heat in these heifers is we are going to increase their nutrient plane, which will give them the signal, their brain, the signals they need to, to go through puberty. And also, when we synchronize this, these heifers, we're gonna use a progestin, which will stimulate or induce estrus in these prepubertal heifers. But right now, the plan is we're gonna run them here on paddock one, put a little hay out with them, feed them supplement, put a little bit of flesh on them here between now and the end of November, the end of November, we're going to put them through the sink protocol and AI them, and then uh, then turn a bull out with them. So that's the plan for the heifers right now. We of course uh, will be looking for markets for them. If we happen to to see some ads or something where somebody's wanting some heifers uh, uh, capable of breeding, pre-breeding age, weight, and prepared, um, and they're the right price, we might go ahead and move them. The that price for feeder cattle right now is pretty low. And so uh, we're, we're not going to be able to sell them as feeder heifers uh, if we want to maximize our return. Well, that's it for today. Kind of a busy day, but thanks for joining us on another episode of Abata Farm. Now what?